Welcome back. Uh, following the directive of Nigeria's central bank to financial institutions in the country for the implementation of a cybersecurity levy on all electronic transactions, uh, questions have been uh, raised about the, uh, the percentage that should be deducted from customers' transactions. Of course, on May 6, uh, the Nigerian central bank uh, sent a memo to the uh, banks in the country to implement the levy of 0.5%. That's 0.005% equivalent to half a percent of uh, all electronic transactions. So what does the central bank say? Now, they're saying um, that this policy will take effect uh, in two weeks from when they sent out that memo, and it will be uh, uh, remitted to the National Cyber Security Fund, which will be administered by the Office of the National Security Advisor. That's um, Malam Nuhu Ribado, of course, you know. Well, the central bank is also saying that a deduction and the collection of this new levy, the cyber security levy, is uh, following the enactment of the Cyber Crime Prohibition, uh, Prevention, Etc. Amendment Act of uh, 2024. What have Nigerians been saying? Well, many Nigerians have uh, reason to condemn the introduction of this new cyber security levy, uh, with some saying that it will push them back to using more cash that's out of the electronic banking system, something that the Nigerian government has tried to promote over the years. And others are saying that it will aggravate the already dire and difficult uh, economic situation that they are facing. Our guest on this uh, uh, discussion tonight is Temi Tayoku Boyajo. She's a technology consultant. She joins us from the UK. Uh, Temi Tayo, good evening to you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Good evening, Kofi, and thank you for having me. Uh, what are your thoughts on and the reasons that the Nigerian federal government has given for uh, the introduction of this new levy? So... I think um, it's a very shameful exercise because the government has decided to put the cart before the horse. No organization in the world will start with, you know, money in terms of uh, developing a cyber strategy. The government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria have started uh, this process of, you know, levying people without necessarily telling us, or maybe even creating a, a national cyber strategy. And this is what any country who really is interested in securing their, their, you know, their cyber space, they would start with a, a cyber strategy. So for example, if you Google any of the advanced nations, every single one of them every year would have um, a cyber strategy developed and they would have specific people or specific individuals within the government who would be the overseer of that strategy, which would essentially mean, you know, specific members of the cabinet or people who would be appointed separately for those roles would have defined roles and responsibility within that strategy to implement and deliver it. But it, it's, um, you know, so the government is basically just trying to rack up more money for itself for for reasons that I do not understand, for that reasons that you know the average Nigerian do not understand. And if I am struggling, given like this is like a, a domain area for me, I can imagine what it must be for people mm. for whom this is not their specialty. I'm I'm really I mean uh, uh, intrigued and uh, surprised that you're struggling to even. Uh, understand the length and breadth of all of this. Um, but then what will we, like you said, who are uh, novices in this field do? But um, what possibly could such monies be, be used for? Because um, if it's e every transaction, every single day, every single hour, every single minute, money goes to the <laughs> Office of the National Security Advisor for cybersecurity, what exactly is so expensive about, about cybersecurity? That means you need to make money per minute. So, I mean, you know, it's it's difficult to to say how much uh, it would cost to secure a country because it will depend on the amount of, or it will depend on the scale of risks and threats that the country is exposed to. So if you think about, in fact, so let me put it a, a different way. So I, I looked up some numbers earlier on. I think in 2022, maybe 2023, the cost of um, 
cyber attacks and you know cyber fraud to the Nigerian economy was around five hundred million dollars. So, which would mean, if the government is truly desirous of um, you know developing an actual strategy and costing it, all of this should be budgeted as part of de defense spending. So we really should not be having a ring-fenced um, budget for cybersecurity. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Like I, I've just, I've gone everywhere to go and look at any country following the approach that the Nigerian government have followed. And I'm talking about advanced countries that have had several level of significant cyber, you know, um, uh, cyber attacks on, you know, national assets, national infrastructure, or even on like large institutions. None of them are following this approach. Our government have decided to kind of cite the examples of Ghana as Rwanda. So, so it, it, it makes you wonder where Nigeria suddenly decides to follow what Ghana and Rwanda are doing, as opposed to the other way, where Nigeria should really be playing the role of a leader mm. on the African continent as regards, you know, uh, securing cyber, the, the mm. cyberspace of the continent and of the country. All right. The Ghanaians had what we call e-levy, and, uh, you know, Ghanaians um, vehemently opposed that, you know, so the, their tweets. Um, but you, I keep hearing you talking about when you talk about cyber security or cyber crime, rather. You keep using the <clears> word <throat> cyber fraud, cyber attack. You know, I didn't hear you talk about blogging or journalism. Because from uh, the Cyber Crime Act in Nigeria, it seems that the government really is, is uh, fixated on what people type as a cyber crime, what people post, share. Um, you know, journalism. Um, so if you write <clears> for a blog or a newspaper that has a, a website and you know, somebody writes a petition, it's um, sent to the cyber crime division. Why didn't you, why mm -hmm. are you, so talk, I want to talk about what exactly is cyber crime? What are your thoughts on uh, the labeling of, of journalism as cyber crime? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what the Nigerian government did, or, you know, what the, shall I say, the, you know, what, um, what our um, legislators did in 2015 was to uh, enact this act that covers a scale of, um, quote and unquote um, crimes that are committed online. And those crimes would include crimes like, you know, cyberbullying, stalking. Um, I imagine, um, you know, people's pictures, you know, I, I forgot what the technical name for that term is, but there, there's one where you, if you take, um, you know, nude pictures of someone and intend to blackmail them with it, it would fall, you know, so if you choose to go and um, report to the police and this person is going to be prosecuted, they will be prosecuted under the cyber crime, under the cyber crime act of 2015. So that act on its own was to find a way of um, putting all these crimes that people would otherwise con um, commit in the cyber environment. I mean, online, putting them all under, you know, that act. But in order to be able to um, enforce this, it means that, you know, there are, there are, uh, there are levels of, um, or, or thresholds of uh, evidence you need to be able to provide. And this is where you have individuals having to show evidence of how they've either been you know attacked online and if it's had any big or massive impact on their lives in fact i recall that there were you know I, there were like two or three instances that i can think of so one of them was the former the former first lady of undo states uh some blogger had come online and you know said some malicious things about her and she had, you know, under this act, she had gotten that individual to take down the post. And I think the individual actually had to pay a fine. Then there was another one that was just between two average individuals. Like, you know, these are not office holders. 
who have also used the same, you know, under the same act, they've been able to get justice. So that was what that specific law was meant to address, you know, crimes related to, you know, online behavior right. or online on, online crime, to, you know, from one individual to another individual. And these would be crimes that are easy to prove and they significantly okay the uh, you know all right let me tell you sorry to inter interject but um, uh, when we come back i want us to look at probably potential benefits you know th that could arise from such a levy um you know if, if nigerians start to give the government the benefit of the doubt so we'll do that uh, mm -hmm. i'll have that uh, uh, question for you when we come back from the break for those of you who are watching it's still politics hq please stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back. You're watching Politics HQ. We still have with us Temitayo Kuboyejo. She's a technology consultant. Uh, she joins us via video link from the United Kingdom. Temitayo, um, I remember, you know, that uh, some days ago the MOD, uh, you know, systems in the UK was it had some attack on the payrolls of um, some defence uh, um, uh, personnel in the UK, and it was a big deal, you know. So that's what I think about when it comes to cyber security. But um, uh, what? I mean, what are the potential benefits if, if the federal government is able to take this uh, a levy and use it for the good of the country? Is there, is there somewhere in, in, you know, in all of this that you can say, hey, maybe we can give the government the benefit of the doubt? The government any benefit of the doubt because we don't know what the national strategy is. So in the absence of a national strategy, and, you know, cybersecurity is a very, or, you know, protection of the cyberspace is a very wide and encompassing subject matter. So what exactly is the government trying to achieve? And it is in knowing what the objectives of the government are that then we don't know how, you know, they intend to spend the money. So you would have the strategy or the objectives, then you would have a budget that you want to expand in order to meet those objectives. But in the absence of those objectives, how can you give them any benefit? Like, we don't know what the goals are. What, what exactly is the government trying to do? And people have kind of ignorantly assumed that because this money is being collected by banks, it would be to secure Nigerian financial institutions. But Nigerian financial institutions have been doing that to begin with. I, you know. Go, go and ask any 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 bank operating in the Nigerian space and ask them what kind of controls both. And when I say controls, I mean like safeguards that they have in place. They will tell you what they are doing in order to protect themselves from, you know, be, from, from threat actors uh, attacking them. So it, I'm, I'm sorry, it's difficult on it's, it's impossible to hmm. give right. the government any um any uh, benefit of the doubt uh, tell you, how, how can the nigerian government develop this cyber security strategy that you, you're talking about mm -hmm. so so you know so, so each country will kind of decide you know what are most uh, important to it so for example i i know that the uk has like uh five something they call five pillars and that those five pillars would be to secure the uk economic ecosystem it's to develop cyber resilience. And part of developing cyber resilience would be government organization at the highest level having what you would call exercises, you know, like emergency response exercises, like what would they do should a cyber threat or should a, a cyber risk manifest? So each country kind of just looks at its um, environment and it's on the basis of what its most prevailing threats are, that it would then develop what its strategy would be. So if you were to compare the UK strategy, for example, with the American strategy, it's very, very, very different right. because this, of course, you know, not the same. And this is why, you know, for Nigeria, right. we need to be able to that the government has done the homework as regards what the key threats are. And it's mm -hmm. on the, that basis that the national strategy is then developed. All right. Uh, Temitayo, uh, we do certainly hope that that strategy will be uh, a reality. And uh, of course, authority are listening to you, giving some free um, consultation here. Um, um, maybe they can <laughs> pick on that. But thank you so very kindly for your time tonight. Thank you for having me. All right. Um,
Well, that's the size of our package right here on Politics HU this week. We've had explosive conversations. We return uh, on Monday with more on Politics HQ. My name is Kofi Bartels. On behalf of the entire team, have a fantastic weekend. Good night.